Before you run an A-B test, you should do your statistics. And this is a very critical step. Your statistics basically will tell you the minimum sample size that you need to run an experiment. Now, typically, you will select an A-B testing calculator that depends on the statistical method that is used by your software. So if you're using an A-B testing software that relies on frequentist statistics, you want to find sample size calculator for frequentist tests. If you're using an A-B testing engine using Bayesian statistics, then you want to find a calculator that's based on Bayesian statistics. You plug in your numbers into that calculator. So usually it will ask you for the original conversion rate. That's your baseline conversion rate. It will ask you how many visitors are coming to that particular page, how many variations are going to challenge your control and what kind of lifts you're expecting as a result of running this test or what we call an MDE, minimum desirable effect. People, by the way, struggle a lot. It's like, how do I calculate the lift? Is it 10%? Is it 5%? Do I expect 15%, 20%? Usually what we aim for is anywhere between 10 to 20% based on the test that we're looking at. The smaller the lift that you're expecting, the longer the test will run. And people always find that very strange. Hold on. If I'm expecting a 10% lift, I should run my test longer versus if I expect a 20% lift, I'm going to run my test shorter period. Yeah, it's almost like if you're looking for something and it's really big, so a 20% lift, and you're standing far away in the room, you'll be able to see it because it's really big. But if you're looking for a needle in a haystack, it's very small lift. It's going to take you a while to find it. You plug in those numbers. Now, those numbers might tell you that you should run your test for a week or two weeks. We don't like to run tests for less than a week. We work with eBay. We work with targets. Well, guess what? Just based on statistics, I can actually conclude a test within four hours based on the number of visitors that they get and the conversions that they have. It would be silly of me to do that. So we go for a minimum of a week. After we launch the test, we are also monitoring the results and the stability of the different variations that we have. What do I mean by that? The first couple of days that you launch the test, your variations are going to be all over the place. Conversion rate going up, conversion rate going down. Eventually, there's stability in the data. Now you start seeing a trend, you know, so one variation doing well, one variation not doing well, but it's almost like, you know, if you look at it on a graph, it's very stable. If we're seeing things are all over the place, up and down, up and down. First thing that we do is we want to go to our quality control team and say, the experiments that we've launched, is there an issue in it? That's the very first thing, by the way, away from sample size and everything, because we might have a problem there. Second thing we say, well, you know, although our pre-test calculation tells us that we need to run the test for a week, we're probably going to run it for a little bit longer. Most of the time we aim for running the test for two weeks. Your pre-test calculation tells us that we're going to run the test for a week or two weeks. And again, you determine that prior to launching the test. You're aiming for less say a 95% confidence or 95% chance to beat original. You run the test for two weeks, but you did not achieve the 95% confidence. What do you do in that case? You can either decide, okay, we're going to run the test a little bit longer. Most of the time we stop and then we do post-test analysis. Thank you.